Are you recording? Yeah. It's 1.37 a.m., Friday the 16th of February, and I'm here with a friend on reports of a most unusual creature living in the bay beside us. And we're going to dive down and find it. I've dived all around the world, but few creatures make one's skin crawl like the beast I'm about to capture, with more eyes than limbs, and more mouth than brain. We'd only just hit the bottom when I could tell. We were being watched. A huge shoal of garfish, each the length of a man's forearm, swept down from above. Mesmerized in the bright lights of our torches, they began to swim at us, striking our legs, arms, bodies, even our faces. Quickly we descended yet again, keeping near the seabed where they feared to swim. We soon reached the seagrass beds, crawling and slithering with biomass. Broad-nosed pipefish mocked the blades, crude life forms of disparate shapes roamed the floors beneath. We came across a dogfish, hiding in the grass. Another lay meters away, curled up defensively. Something out there had scared them. Fifteen more minutes and we'd reached where we needed to be. The sand flats, an open expanse of mud, bodies and rot. I keep my knife close because I know it's out here. The cold water numbs my hands and I'm shaking as I kick out, soon to meet an open mouth and two hundred eyes. Until... Oh, for fuck's sake. What? Come on. No scallops. Oh, oh don't. Scallops. Oh, come on, don't oh, leave. Don't go. Okay, fine. I'll freely admit that a scallop is not what one thinks of when they think of a big scary monster, but I guarantee you that when you see what's in here, you're going to be utterly <laughs> horrified. Or at least mildly. Perturbed. Here's a scallop I prepared earlier. It's dead, and it's a little bit stiff as a result, so I'll just... There we go. Look at all those mystery organs in there. <laughs> it does feel familiar. But I'm from London, so I've got to get the knife out. I'll just pretend I saw the scallop wearing a Rolex watch. We're in. I love scallop anatomy because the dissection's basically done for you. The body plan is so simple they don't even have skin to hold them together. But they've got everything else, and you all know their names. Say it with me now. We got the left gill. Gonad. Right gill. Muscle pan. Oracle. Tentacle. Ventricle. ventricle labial palp. Brazilian stomach. Infolding mantle ridge. <coughs> I'll get it to rhyme eventually. Hang on, bring that top shell back. Have a look at these little structures lining the mantle. They reflect light, and they line both the top and the bottom pieces of shell. Could those be... eyes? Two hundred eyes? Roll credits. So scallops do in fact have eyes that line the entirety of their bodies. And that's rather strange, not just from a human perspective, but from a scallop perspective as well. You see, scallops belong to a group of animals called bivalves. Bivalves are essentially soft, fleshy animals living inside two pieces of shell which are attached by a hinge. Like a living chest where the succulent treasure inside is always kept locked away. You've all seen and probably eaten a bivalve or two before, as they include clams, cockles, mussels, oysters and everything in between. They aren't very mobile and most of them spend their lives buried beneath sediments like sand, mud or gravel. Some live on rocks, attached by special threads grown from their bodies, but hardly any live freely on the sea floor, where the risk of predation is high. As a result, they either won't have eyes, or have very simple eyes, consisting of some photosensory cells and a lens, just enough to sense changes in the light. But not our appetising little friend here. Most scallops don't burrow or attach themselves to rocks, 
They just sit in neat little divots they make for themselves and just hang around. They need eyes because when you're out in the open, you have to worry about one of these or one of these or one of these. And when they're disturbed, they either close the doors or they run away. Those little eyes are astoundingly complex. Scallop eyes are to bivalves what the human brain is to primates. Absolutely revolutionary. Here's a scallop eye next to your eye. You've both got single aperture eyes with corneas, lenses and optic nerves. But that's really where the similarities start to end. Your eye takes in light and absorbs it directly into the retina, which surrounds its inner wall. The rod and cone cells in the retina then absorb that light and it's used to create an image. In contrast, the interior wall of the scallop eyes are instead covered with tiny guanine crystals. These crystals reflect the light like a parabolic mirror into a double-layered retina in the eye's center. This is essentially the same mechanism that many of our modern telescopes use to focus light. When computer models were made to test the scallop eye, it was found that the guanine mirrors are shaped and oriented to reflect specific forms of light on each retina. This means that the eyes may even produce two images at once, the inner retina gathering light from the periphery and giving a picture of what's in front, the smaller outer retina detecting rapid changes in light, which could be the movements of a predator. Ah, ah! So all the while you admire this odd little creature, it admires you back. And never mind just sensing light and dark, it can actually see you. It can see you with a wide focused image and in color. We don't know exactly what images these eyes can produce, but the shape of the crystals means that they'd reflect mostly blue and green light, which makes sense as these are often the only wavelengths of light that can reach the sea floor. Why the scallops need quite so many eyes is a mystery to science. Never mind how they're supposed to use these eyes when running the neural equivalent of Windows 95. Just keep in mind, nature seldom makes one mistake, let alone 200 of them. And there you have it, the most convoluted lesson in mollusk anatomy you're ever going to take. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for hanging in and watching my very first video on this channel. In fact, you've all been so well behaved, I think you deserve a blooper reel. Goodbye for now. Are you rolling? Yeah, I've got you. It's Friday, 1.30. Do it again. <laughs> you wrong? <laughs> Sorry. Do it again. Are you coming? Yes. Oh, I We're going to dive down and find it. <laughs> You're rolling. Si, senor. Get rid of that then. <laughs> You're rolling. Yeah, ma'am. <laughs> Do it again. Sorry. Do that again. Uh, sorry. Just do that again. Sorry, do that again. We're gonna go. The 16th of February. Is that of course, it's that fucking focus. Friday the 15th of February. And I'm here with a close friend of mine on reports. 16th, it doesn't matter. It. 15th of February. You dick! That was a good one as well.